And the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, says he has, uh, with him, aggrieved governors of the People's Democratic Party, at least five of them, which includes a common interest that they have in finding a better Nigeria for all citizens at a time where the country is facing escalating security threat, humanitarian crisis, and a lack of leadership on the part of the ruling All Progressive Congress. He was saying all of this uh, in uh, Makodi, the capital of Benue State, when he visited Governor Samuel Autumn. Take a listen to uh, Mr. Peter Obi. I can tell you the only deal I have with them is that they are passionate for a better Nigeria. That's the only thing. Everybody wants Nigeria to survive now. Everybody, you know, because at the end of the day, if it collapses, anarchy consumes everybody. You wouldn't see have a party. If they threw a bomb now here, you wouldn't know who is governor, who is the get man. So it is better we save Nigeria. Because if it happens, nobody knows who will be affected. The Labour Party, well, that's the, the presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, earlier today in Mokodi. Well, the Labour Party was at the verge of releasing its manifesto officially, which the candidate says uh, he, it will be released by him. And the candidate said the one that was earlier posted on the website of the party uh, had to be reworked and a few changes had to be made and they will soon finalize. Let's talk about some of these issues. The Labour Party, the manifesto, the Peter Obi, the agenda or the alliance with uh, some PDP governors and what this means ahead in the race of the 2023. Let's speak with a chieftain of the Labour Party, Professor Pantutoni. He joins us live here in Abu just to do. Thank you so much, Prof, for coming. Great pleasure. You, you heard my conversation with um, Professor Alkali, and we've made up our minds to be able to ask the question on how, you know, not only what you want to do, but how, because over the years it's been, uh, we want to do this, but people have not answered the critical question on how it's going to be done. Um, tonight, your party has not released its manifesto. We saw an abridged version and were unofficial versions. When do you think that will be ready? Well, the manifesto is more or less le ready. The only reason it has not been formally released is the intensity of the campaigns have taken away the principal tour in the country. Uh, the team that has worked on this and spent literally weeks, you know, on this has briefed him a couple of times, one of which was just before he went to uh, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce, but needs a thorough work down with him because he has to own it. It's his document. It's not what some people put together. He put down a template that they worked on and uh, have given live to, but hopefully this weekend or so, uh, there'll be a sit down with, with him and this team and after that there'll be a document that is good and ready to go out with this imprimato. Okay, great. So perhaps before the end of the week? Um, it could be weekend depending on the campaign schedule mm. and by next week I'm sure it will be ready but um, there are also the ceremonials around making such a thing available so there can be a choice of a date and a time to uh, get um, real value out of uh, the unveiling of uh, that document. I know uh, you, um, you probably have heard the criticism um, of your candidate, of your party, um, that it takes you a bit of a time to be able to put yourself together. Uh, first and foremost, when you release, it took you time to release the, the list of the presidential campaign council. When you did, uh, you make an amendment, you make a readjustment. Now, uh, there's this dilly darling uh, from your critics. I mean, that's what your critics are saying, that you went forward, there was a release and the manifesto, and I mean, what is going on? Uh, how do you allay the fears and, and of, you, of your followers and your supporters that the fact that things are tightly put together or your, there is a proper administration of the campaign and the, and the party? Well, I think it is a natural process to filter things you're building. Don't forget, these other groups have been around for youngs and you're, you're building. You've got all new people who've come together to realize a goal for the country. Nigeria faces an existential challenge, and there was a need to rescue 
the ship of state. Uh, the process of rescue involves so many different parties. In fact, tomorrow I will be, um, you know, presenting another part of this process. Um, the approach, the structure uh, that we take, I like to describe, forget that I'm, I'm an organization person, as organic bulb of complex redundancy. What does this mean? Anybody who has an idea of organizational behavior, you, you take an onion. Onion is a classic bulb. You peel off, and you peel off, and you get to another layer. And so there are several layers in this process. And people feel one way or another about how these layers flow together. And so you've got to have iterations of positions around how an organic bulb, which is designed to be redundant and complex, so that you can have a fail-safe system. A classic example of complex redundancy is in aviation. When you design a Boeing jet, okay, you have three fallbacks. Engineers know that the first fallback you never quite get to using for some, like maybe less than 1% of the time. But you have a second fallback and you have a third fallback because engineering is designed for safety. If you go to political science and you look at complex redundancy, classic example offered uh, by an American political scientist called Iron Vildavsky back in the 70s, the budget process. Why does a bill go into um, the house on banking? And the house reads it, walks through it, sends it to the finance committee, they walk through it, then they send down to the banking subcommittee, then the banking subcommittee who have, holds public hearings, and then it goes all the way back. That process is called complex redundancy because you want it to be fail safe. Because you're gonna discover challenges, you're gonna correct, you're gonna make yeah. sure that what comes out is foolproof. That's the same process. So that, that, that's what you're building. Absolutely. That's, that's what you're having. Absolutely. So this Labour Party is gonna go, it's in the long haul. Absolutely. It, it doesn't mean it's, that even if your candidate does not win, you are not it, abandoning it, the ship. Not at all. This, let me remind you how this process evolved. A number of people took a look at Nigeria, realized the country is going to make it long the way it's being run. Very clear. The whole world knows this. In many places, we're the laughing stock of the world with our resources, with our endowments, and, and all of that. And the question is, how do we save this ship of state from collapsing? And we came out in different groups. One was Rescue Nigeria Project, focusing on how do you create a sense of a collegial leadership where people who have the competence, capacity, and commitment, real patriots, get together in a collegial way, offer the country a new direction. So the leadership challenge was what Rescue Nigeria Project focused on. I was on the steering committee. I, I, I'm on the steering committee. And another group came. I was looking for how you can build a coalition of interests political parties, civil society, social movements, and all of those. Now, at a point we then said, if everybody could come together, recognizing that what matters is saving Nigeria, we would have a big tent that essentially holds everybody. And this big tent is the basis of this organic ball. Yeah. And, and the Labour Party flowed into it. Mm -hmm. The Labour movement itself flowed into it. And what we are certain about is that given the way we are evolving things, this is going to be a, a disruption like has never been seen in this country. So Because people are going to look at traditional ways yeah, because, and they're going to be shocked You know, the critics, outcomes. those who have done the permutation that say, look, the Labour Party will play a major role. We'll go far. But as far as the political dynamics of Nigeria is concerned, mm -hmm. that they may not be able to get what they want immediately. And the, those, the, that, those are of the school the, of thought. Those people have missed not, not, the trends in Africa. Just a moment. Yes. Those, those are uh, one of the school of thought that said, yes. uh, Peter Obi will go far, will decimate a lot of uh, grounds that the traditional political parties have held sway. Mm. And uh, those who are of the school of thought that said, look, Peter Obi, in fact, will win. Mm. The margin may not be so much, but he will win. Mm. And the polls have supported those school of thought. Yeah. I mean, so the question is, uh, for those who say they are realists and that based on the dynamics, Labour Party may not win. What do you have to say to that? 
Look at what's happening in Africa. Look at all the recent elections. You go to Malawi, you go to Zambia, you go to Kenya, you go to Botswana. All the people that were ridiculed as internet champions won. All the social media, ooh, they're just social media people, all of them won. So there's a way. Africans are fed up with governments that don't work. With this obsessive self-love that politicians have, and they do this trading off in transactions for their self-interest, forgetting the people. And this is what has kept a country like Nigeria below par. And Africans, the youth of Africa, are saying, this cannot continue. They proved it in Kenya. They proved it in Malawi. They're going to prove it in Nigeria. And I regret to take you, I mean, because the last interview, I had to drag you into the matter of your friend. But again, <laughs> uh, somehow it's coming to the <laughs> to the friend. <laughs> the Afeni Ferry, uh, your friend, Bola Tinubu, who was at Pafa Soroti's house over the weekend, and he got a blessings, which some said have divided Afeni Ferry. How much of a blow is that? for your candidate and your you know, party? You know, my politics is significantly shaped by the politics of the southwest of Nigeria. In my view, the part of Nigeria that most exudes principle-centered politics is the southwest. And if you check my trajectory, it's been driven by what are the principles I saw you trying to uh, muscle uh, 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 Pai or the banjo yesterday. You did not succeed. You were trying to muzzle him, but you, you did no, not succeed. I was succeed. trying to get uh, <laughs> the real issues out. The because of what there is that there is a Is that his position is driven purely by principles. And he told you that those positions were taken long before Peter Obi showed up. And that's true. OK? And the fact that a candidate goes to an elder and he blesses him, is normal. If I go to Papa Sonorti, he will bless me. So I'm not going to get into who bless who. Will Mr. Peter will be go to Papa Sonorti? He can go he, if the time Because the word out there was go. that the blessings that Peter will be got from the chief at the banjo led Afeni Ferry was not transmitted to Pafa Soronti, who is the substantive leader of, of Fafeni Ferry, that yeah, uh, I, Pade Banjo was holding sway uh, in confidence from Pafa Soronti. You know, I don't want to get into red herrings that don't really amount to, to much. What we're talking about is that a group of people take a very principle-centered position. And Pade Banjo did not go to anoint, to bless. What happened? was that the leaders of the South-South with Pai Edwin Clark, the leaders of the North Central, the leaders of the Southeast, and Afeni Ferry representing the Southwest met. I was privileged to be at that meeting. It was to be hosted by Pa Clark, but he was in a state of mourning, having lost his brother. And that meeting was hosted by Pa Ayo Adibanjo at the request of Chief Edwin Clark. And at that meeting, these ethnic nationality groups said, this is the principle that we stand on. It will go forward. That's their position. I like to take it that it was based on some fundamental principles of decency, fairness, and a certain moral compass. Um, I am not familiar with or interested in internal dynamics of Afeni Ferry and, and all of that. Those things are generated by people who still want to divide Nigeria. What is at stake is that our country is dying. And the young people of Nigeria want to disrupt this system that leads to only one thing, state capture. State capture in which politicians obsessed with love of self take the common good and make or yes prof I, I regret that i mean i wish i had um, uh, access to my uh, to to the board to the to the electronic board there where i would have been able to show you the, the nigerian political map and how historically elections are ah, won and lost and that's where you're losing it you're, going to, you're basing your thinking on history when the world has moved from history but politics and I give you prof, hey, science, africa i mean interestingly it's science you are, yes you are i mean you are you're a scholar uh, in that respect hey, hey, yes. and, and we know that history 
history is also part of science. And uh, absolutely. The reasons why you factor uh, history into your science. That's why you're looking at the history of Kenya. You're looking at the history of Malawi. You're looking at the history of Zambia. Look, the population of Nigeria, the median age is 18. And this group of people constitute by far the population. People of my ilk are less than 6% of the population. But the ones still possessed with this person said, my grandfather said, look, I had the privilege of hosting a meeting, two meetings actually in my home years ago, of a group uh, given life by uh, Reverend Laddie Thompson. Was, the movement was Yiba. He was trying to bring alive Chief Obafemi Aolo's charge to um, uh, Professor Akintoe, uh, who was then Secretary of UPN, and Chief Olani Mwajai, you know, you guys must fix this thing between the Southeast and Southwest. Because unless you fix it, you guys are going to be slaves in Nigeria. That charge, you know, somebody approached me to host the meeting. I hosted it. All the major serious Yoruba leaders were there, including Payo, Adiban George, uh, Professor Akintoe, and down the line, many of them. The Ibuans were there. The generals, Lubisekano, Iken Wachuku, Professor Biozo, all of them. And the point that was being made was that this thing is a red herring. Now, instead of people who are true nationalists recognizing that what Nigeria is owed today is unity and security, mm. thinking as statesmen, they are trying to play the politics of division because of personal ambition. I think history will judge very harshly. Two, two quick questions, like Prof. And I just have 60 seconds to, to close. The first being the fact, I mean, the question I was going to ask you, the fact that the PDP, uh, some uh, leaders of the PDP think Peter Obi will have held a lot of the votes that would naturally would have gone to the PDP traditionally, historically, I mean, the Southeast and some part of the South-South. Uh, the first question I'd like to ask you uh, before we close, which part of the two question is, what strategy are you hoping to use in turning around what has become the historical trend of voting in Nigeria, which may not be in the favor of Mr. Pitobi? Just what, quickly. What is that historical trend? I mean, the trend of uh, how political parties have held sway and what traditionally the kind of votes that have, that have been apportioned. You're becoming, Nigeria is you're not, becoming an anachronism. No, you're no, missing no. The, the, the Prof, move of history. In, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in America, in the UK, there yeah. are traditional states that go for political parties, where political parties are held. So, for example, the last election, interestingly, the state like Wisconsin was taken by the party that has never held it in years. Uh -huh. So the so question you, is, you what strategy? Your theory. No, no, I'm saying oh, that okay. historically, what, what, things, okay. ah, yeah, things okay. might change. Now, but yeah, I'm yeah. asking, what strategy do you have, we have to turn it around? That is so clear that we want, look, as you know, elections in Nigeria have been producing lower and lower turnouts year on year, even though the population is growing. Why is that so? Traditionally, most of those votes came from rigging. Increasingly, electoral laws make it more difficult to do those things. Young people who typically say, eh, let them do what they want to do, have said, enough is enough. We, we can't jack by. We will stay here and save our country. And those young people constitute a huge part of the population. So the strategy is to make those young people not just voters, but the protectors of the vote. And we have history. Professor Al-Kali just lived, left here. In Kano, 2007, go and check what happened. A man without money, a man who came as a civil servant, took on a powerful incumbent governor because the youth of the, of the state said, go. Right. And right. they protected the vote, and he beat the incumbent. I, I won't be able to ask you the last question because we are totally out of time. <laughs> but I enjoy having this debate and conversation with you. <laughs> you. You are an academic in uh, political economics, but I am a practical man on the field. Right are you here. kidding me? I, was, I am on the, bro, on the ground. I am a sweet boy. It's different, it's I am a sweet boy. The you know? dynamics are different, bro. <laughs> but it's interesting. But you think that I'm this election will, will shock the traditional political Absolutely. Out of their think. wits. And, and the young and the people way, will and take the way we are organizing it mm -hmm. is such that they won't understand what hit them because they will go the traditional way and they will see why yeah. disruption and technology 
is what has defined our world. We need to leave it there. Uh, I ask you, you, you give some I, I money my, for, my, for the extra My friend Christensen, uh, uh, who is the ultimate father of disruptions, uh, in his grave, will be smiling as we're having this conversation because Nigeria is about to be disrupted. <laughs> Prof, I'll have to send you an invoice. Uh, for the okay. extra that you but thank you so much, Indeed, Prof. It's good to see you again. Good thank pleasure. you so much, Indeed. Prof. Yeah. 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 Prof. Yeah